Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all tidy Tasmanian Tiger games for the GameCube and PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Tidy Tasmanian Tiger is a good game, but some flaws makes it less enjoyable for newcomers. I'll address the flaws and then tell you about the good stuff. So the flaw is that the maps are huge and the game is a collector's run and not all areas hide something. There are also big patches of nothing important and that can render you to roam the same area over and over to find stuff to do and to collect. That's about the only flaw I can call. Because in rest, the game is great. It feels like a mixture between Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie. You get a hub world and multiple sub worlds. You collect crystals instead of stars and you either find them or collect enough items to get one or solve NPC side quests to get one. The combat is great, you get two boomerangs which you can throw and by the end of the game you get a nice deal of different boomerangs. Even a kaboomerang that explodes. You get one that freezes water so you can make yourself platforms, a flaming boomerang and more. Also the game goes full Australian on you. From the accent to the locations to the stereotypes. And I like that. Also, even if the story is childish and you shouldn't take it serious, it has some nice humor in it. The platforming mechanics are also great, you can even glide with the boomerangs. So that's about it with the game. It's good, but some level design choices can get on your nerves. Still, it's a good game. Tai 2 Bush Rescue is awesome. Some prefer the first game, but judging by the reviews, the second one is a better game. And I can confirm, it's the era of sub-games. A time where developers tried to put as many mini-games into a platformer as they could. Some didn't like the new style, but honestly I love it. To this day, I love games that are rich in sub-games. It's a personal preference of mine. And Tai does exactly that. It tries to integrate as much new stuff as it can. And the result is nice. The main game is roughly the same in gameplay mechanics as the first one and atop of the familiar formula comes mech suits with different uses, a helicopter minigame and a submarine minigame that works in the same way, turret sections, there are new boomerangs including a swing rank which is not only useful but also feels great. And when you get to upgrade your ranks and see what damage you can deal you feel awesome and OP. And there is also a kart racing mode. The mode is decent and works as you would expect. It won't surprise you but it's solid and it's cool that you get one. Also a minor novelty is the grind move. You don't have to balance or anything complicated. It's, it's pretty bare bones, you just grind. But it's still cool and keeps the game formula fresh. The game is structured like an open world game. The city which works like a hub is great, there are a lot of details here and stuff to collect, but the rest of the map is a bunch of areas interconnected by road. And the road trip is boring in my opinion. Sure, you can bash bandits, there are crates on the road and mud that slows you down, but I found the car ride experience in between levels boring. Level designs on the other hand are much much better. Stuff is closer and more crammed, levels are smaller but filled with stuff to do. The story is again goofy, it tries to be serious but it still is goofy and cartoony. I like it. Also the opening level is epic, it starts with an ambush. Awesome. Overall Tai 2 is a hidden gem you shouldn't miss out on. It's an open world game that has the same high quality as Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Dexter. Tai 3 Night of the Quinkas is the worst. It follows the same formula as Tai 2 but somehow manages to feel like some sort of Chinese copy of Tai 2. It's the same but much worse. The way Tai moves is worse, you get less combos, less ranks, the story is incohesive most of the time and there are some underwhelming or even annoying minigame sections you can't avoid. One annoying section are the kart races. Here you don't just have to win the race, no you have to complete various objectives and the track designs are horrible. And instead of being a bonus like they were in Tai 2, now they are mandatory. 
If you want to progress the game, you have to do the annoying kart races. Another annoying and underwhelming new minigame is when you pilot the Ganyan. It sounds good, but it isn't. Though some good parts there are to it. The new vehicle, the Crab Merciable, which is faster than the buggy from Tai 2, and also the mech suits feel better in my opinion. But here it seems that I'm the only one saying that. Also boomerangs have an upgrade system. You can equip attributes to any rank, but unfortunately the game doesn't give you enough occasions to use more than a few ranks. So even if theoretically you get more possibilities than in past games, in practice you get less ranks to use. Overall, the game is disappointing because it doesn't reach the high stakes put by Tai 2. As I said, it somehow manages to feel like a cheap copy of Tai 2. It does have its improvements, but the downsides exceed the good parts. Still, the game is good and solid even if it has those annoying parts I've mentioned. The game is also kinda boring but still is a good game and a solid one. But maybe I'm biased because I was disappointed to see that it isn't as good as Taito, I don't know.